This is the timeline of a typical marriage in the United States. So let's just say, for example, um, a couple gets married at 25 or 30, somewhere in that range. So they get married 25 to 30, and you know they have their kids, one to how many. And so within that time period, they're generally getting married and having kids from like the 25 to 35 range, keeping in line with uh, the woman's fertility as well. So, you know, meet in their 20s, maybe do the high school and college thing, and then uh, mid-20s, find someone or look to settle down, have a family. And so at some point they, they meet and get married, so we'll just say 25 to 30 in meeting and getting married, and then the 25 to 35 extended of having the kids. Something very funny happens at 35 because going over um, sexual marketplace value, uh, the man's SMV is going to peak 35 to 45. That's going to be a man's prime. So right when the woman is leaving her um, fertility window, the man is ascending in what he's doing, in his career, in his looks, his wealth, um, charisma, um, social status, all of that. So they, they have... Um, two different trajectories that they're doing there so like it's like the, the man is aging like wine and the woman is aging like milk just an expression i'm not saying that that's what i believe but just an expression to um detail that concept so this causes a lot of problems because um the woman is not going to just um accept the man ascending past a certain point in her own head because let's assume that they went into this marriage um, looking for monogamy and to raise the kids and them to you know falling in love dying old together happily ever after and all that but as the man's ascending maybe he started with an entry-level job somewhere at the beginning of the marriage and then now he's hitting his SMV he's 35 to 45 in that range he's now the manager or he's the owner of something and so he goes into work now with like a higher status in the world and the new secretary at the job, the younger secretary, he has a dilemma. She's starting to um, become attracted to him. So does he cheat on his wife or does he um, stay faithful? And so the man's SMV is rising, the 35 to 45 being the peak, but that's that's a weird time for the woman because that's, it's like past, it's not, it's like not quite fertile, but like not quite menopause either. So it's like that weird like middle gap. And so that's why they say that um, a lot of women, like their sex drive will peak uh 30s and 40s and that's like the biological way of um nature being like have a kid before it's too late so that's why it's like the joke of like the horny women from like the mid 30s to the mid 40s um because it's kind of true and you know it's not to say that that's peak fertility obviously that would be late teens and early 20s but something does happen with women from that like mid 30s to mid 40s time where they're not quite fertile but they're not quite on menopause so like the hormones are raging and it's nature being like quick like this is the last chance like have a kid yet yeah, like your biological urge and duty of passing on to the next generation so that's a, it's just a weird timeline of how that works so like the man is um acquiring all these options as he's getting older but ironically like the woman is assuming that they both went into this um thinking that it's going to be monogamous uh the woman's not just going to be like the neglected housewife or like the aging woman that's just a uh, the man the man starts to see that his wife's getting older hormones um dealing with all the the emotions of that so as she's kind of like hitting the wall and going down and he's going up he's very tempted because he has all these other options out there he's hitting his smv so it, it causes the man to be in a position where he has to contemplate does he cheat on his wife or does he remain faithful now like i said the woman's not gonna just uh accept that she's not just gonna be the neglected housewife so um in keeping in line with what she's looking for maybe the pool guy comes over and now she has the choice does she cheat on her husband with the pool guy or does she remain faithful and that's the thing too it's like as she's doing this the guy that's hitting his SMV, he's like, wait a second, I'm not just going to be some resource provider that's just, <laughs> just funneling money into this woman. And so, um, like, they both have, like, the option to cheat. They may cheat. But then it causes all those weird dynamics of, like, power imbalance and uh, <laughs> trying to seek equilibrium. And normally when stuff uh, 
goes south, you know, you can just end it or whatever, or just go separate ways or however the case may be. But then you add the kids and the legal contract of the marriage where if you do end it, now you got to get the court involved, the government, um, who's getting the house, who's getting the car, who's getting the dog, who's getting the kids. Now the in-laws are like mad at the other one, uh, like the spouse of the kid that's theirs. And it's like, it's just this weird family dynamic. But you see that happen a lot where it's, um, yeah, well, they talk about the honeymoon phase too with these couples, but it's like the honeymoon phase is really just that, um, like you're meeting them for the first time. So like, you know, you typically people aren't going to get married within like a week of meeting someone. So that quote unquote honeymoon phase is already going to be over on the day of the wedding. So like that, that initial phase is over, but then they have the wedding day. And now because of the way that the courts are and how it's a uh, actual contract, she basically, the wife has, um, the security, the financial security net of the husband. So if they ever get divorced, she's entitled to half and, um, till death do us part. And so that creates, um, a lot of different, um, outcomes with that one, because she already has him now locked down a little bit of her attraction for him is lost because she's already conquered it. So like, what's the next conquest? So ironically, the, the, the couple that's like trying to do the right thing, trying to have this like monogamous uh, relationship to raise a family in like a stable environment, um, thinking that it was gonna be this tight bond, it, there a little bit of the attraction is lost because if he was like, you know, the alpha male leader, him just being like under contract and under control, that like loses a little bit of his alpha frame which ironically is what attracted her to him in the first place. It's like if he's a superhero fighting crime and she falls in love with that. Well, the second he stops fighting crime and he plays the husband role and father and all that, and he's you know coming to the house instead of uh, being out in the city fighting crime, she loses a little bit of attraction because that's not the guy she fell for. Like she falls in love with the musician with the long hair playing guitar. The second he cuts off his hair and she convinces him to get a real job and then he's you know suit and tie in some cubicle now he's already lost like the alpha frame quote unquote so it's ironic it's like they they, they think they found someone that they want to do the monogamous thing with their whole life whether they have kids or not so they think they found it and so then they go for the marriage thinking that's the right thing to do but it actually binds them in a way and changes the identity of what they perceived on like initial impression to a point where the attractions actually lost but now you got this legally binding thing that is not just easy to get rid of and then you add kids to the mix now you got like other people's lives and survival and emotions on the line and so the whole thing is just uh the whole thing gets messy and not only that too is you know people get married and not really thinking about all the factors involved outside of their marriage what about your work what about other obligations so like yeah you're married yeah you got this a little bit of college debt you got your mortgage but now you're going to this job 40 hours a week there's this chunk of time that you're not even seeing your spouse so if you're already having problems day to day just on the regular life stuff who's to say that your spouse isn't going to work and then meeting someone else that they connect with on some level or uh whatever the case may be so you got this college debt you got this mortgage but then you you go to this office building or wherever you work for 40 hours a week just to pay off the college debt and the mortgage trying to have some functional thing with this family but the two of you the man and the woman um you might not be mutually attracted to each other um you might not have the free time and you might not have the money to make life uh enjoyable so like people are getting into these marriages based on timeline like the woman's biological clock which is a real thing she's got to be more serious about family and kids earlier if that's something that she truly wants and the man's time clock on like what he can provide and uh how much money he's making but at the same time too if he wants to do the family and kids thing even though he doesn't have the biological clock most guys aren't trying to have to work from like 20 to 70 just to have enough money and then at 70 like hey what girl wants to have my kid now at 70. i mean it's doable um it's a physical thing that could happen but it's not the ideal path so there's a little bit of a time crunch for both the woman is a little bit more rushed but there's this time crunch thing going on 
with all these other factors like is the money in the right situation is my like health in the right situation um but even too like you think the money's in the right situation you got your degree or you're working your job and then like the economy gets locked down and or someone lays you off because they want to save money on their business and didn't didn't know that you had a wife to take care of and you losing that job now you have less money and then therefore become less attractive and it puts a strain on your relationship then she meets a guy with more money and it's just like it's all that going on so that's the typical timeline of marriage you go from those like 20s all the way through and then based on the smv values things um kind of get tricky from there